Is anyone out there? Well, if you are, it's time to make a purchase because the holidays are upon us and everyone knows that our collections make the best, unique gift at great pricing. For you horror fans, check out the all-new Horror 500 Gigabyte Collection and also the new 2 terabyte Sci-Fi and Horror Collection. You ask, where do I go to get these fantastic collections? <laughs> well, you go to oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. And while you're there, sign up for Nostalgia USA Digital Magazine with over 15 hours of audio and video on every issue, all free. Where you ask? Well, oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. Visit today. Order today. oldtimeradiodvd.com. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L and N Filters. This is it. L and M is best. Stands out from all the rest. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? Ain't that Doc's buggy setting out by Joe Crumley's shack there? Huh? Uh, yeah, must be. Masters like them couldn't afford a buggy. Mm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, let's stop and see what's going on, huh? All right, sir. <laughs> I bet old Doc will be surprised to see us way out here. Yeah. Yeah, it's not much of a place Cromley's got there, is it? Strange. My. They better quit if you ask me. Now, let's time to the buggy, Chester. All right, sir. Who's that out there? That's Matt Dillon, Miss Cromley. Hello, Marshal. Ma'am. Matt. Hi, Doc. Chester. Hello, Doc. Uh, we, uh, we were on our way to Fort Lauderdale, and we saw Doc's buggy, so we thought we'd stop and say hello. How you do, ma'am? Chester. Yes. Uh, your husband sick, Miss Crumley? No. No, Marshal. He died, Matt. Oh, I... I I'm sorry to hear that, ma'am. Doc done all he could. Just... Just weren't no use. I might as well not have come. I couldn't do a thing for him. Now, Doc, don't say that. You've been up 24 hours trying to save him. It's not time that saves a patient, Mrs. Crumley. It's knowledge... Knowledge I don't have. You know what there is to know, Doc. Nobody knows more. Your husband's dead, Mrs. Crumley. I wanted to save him. You tried. Uh, what are you going to do now, ma'am? Uh, can we help you in any way? Thank you, Marshal. There's nothing. 
With Joe gone, I can't stay here. I reckon in a day or so I'll... I'll pack up and move on. I I don't know where I'll go. I, I've got no place. I, excuse me, I've got to get any place. Now, that poor lady. He didn't have to die. It's not your fault, Well, then Doc. whose fault is it, I'd like to know. Now, Doc, you're not making sense. It's being a doctor that doesn't make sense. Spending my life trying to look into the faces of people like Mrs. Crumley and having to listen to them thank me for letting their people die. Oh, I'm sick. You need a drink, Doc. I know what I need. Now, why don't you leave me alone? Get your horses off my buggy and go on up to Larned or wherever you're headed for. Uh, yeah, sure, Doc. Come on, Chester. Yeah, Doc. How long are you going to be gone, Matt? No. Maybe a week. Uh-huh. <clears throat> when you get back to Dodge, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. If I'm still there. Yep. Come on, Joe. Let's stop, Mr. Chester Proudfoot. Chester? How you do? I came by before, Marshal, but uh, your office was locked up. Well, we've been away. We just got back. What can I do for you, Mr. Betchel? Why, nothing, sir. Only wanted to meet you. I met most everybody in Dodge by now. I've been getting acquainted. You know how it is when you move to a new town. <laughs> you gone into business of some kind? Well, not exactly, Marshal. I'm a professional man. Oh, what? <laughs> that is, I'm a doctor, Chester. I know. Well, we, we've got a doctor. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure meeting you both, and I'm sure we'll be good friends. I, uh, I would admire to buy you both a drink next time we meet. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, Doctor Betchel. That's a funny thing, Chester. What? Doc said he'd buy me a drink when I got back. He did? Yeah. If he's still here, he said. Them's got everything. Superior filtration. Superior taste. Superior filtration because of LM's superior filter. White. All white. Pure white. The purest tip that ever touched your lips. Superior taste because of LM's superior tobaccos. Tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. No doubt about it. LM is America's best filter tip cigarette. This is it, L&M filters. L&M's got everything. It's the best. Uh, 
Dong? Yeah, Chester. You want to stop in Delmonico's for a cup of coffee? <laughs> All right. Hey, look, Mr. Dillon. Huh? Over yonder. It's Doc, by the window there. Well, he hasn't left. No, sir. Hey, there's Miss Kitty. Out there in the back there, see? Oh, well, I'll go say hello to her, Chester. You go sit with Doc. I'll, I'll join you in a couple of minutes. All right, sir. Well, hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Good to see you back. How are you, Kitty? Well, I'm all right, but I'm the only one. Oh, what do you mean? I mean Doc. He's acting like a bear. Oh? I asked him to sit with me when he came in, but he just grumbled something about not being fit company for anybody. And he went over there and sat all by himself. You know, he's been like that for a week. Yeah. Uh, he took Joe Crumley's dime pretty hard, Kitty. Well, that's just part of it, Matt. Oh? This new doctor, Betchel. Ever since he came, Doc's been getting grumpier. <laughs> Maybe he's been losing patience with Betchel. Ah, uh, Doc's never had any competition before. Oh, he's got it now. Look. What? Betchel. Oh. Sure you don't mind if I yeah. Coffee, now, what's he up to? You know, he'd better stay away from Doc if he knows what's good for him. Oh, maybe he's only trying to be friendly. I don't uh, want to talk to you now, about anything. Don't you get all riled up, Adam. There's going to be a fight in a minute, Matt. Yeah, I'd better go see what this is all about, Kitty. Let me know if you find out. Yeah, I will. To explain my position, and if you care to listen to me for a minute instead of hollering all the time. Well, maybe I'll I'm... start carrying a gun, Betchel. Hello, Doc. Matt. Hello there, Marshal. Sit down, Virgil. Well, thank you, sir. I was about to. <laughs> Just what are you buttoning on this for, Matt? Why don't you go arrest some drunks or do what you're supposed to be doing? It's good to see you, Doc. No, it is. Hmm? Hey, Doc. There's Jake Worth out there. He's beckoning to you. Uh, why don't you go see what he wants, Chester? Yes, sir. Who is Jake Worth? I don't think I've met him. Uh, Jake's a rancher, one of the biggest in the country. Yes, you ought to meet him, Betcho. <laughs> yes, he's worth a lot of money. Oh, now, Doc, there's enough here for both of us. He just won't be reasonable, Mark. Reasonable. About what, Betcho? About my practice in here. I don't see why we should be in competition, do you? Well, if there are two doctors in the police, I guess they're bound to be in competition. Oh, two doctors. Now, wait just a moment. Everybody I've talked to admits there's more work here than one man can handle. Well, I guess that's true, isn't it, Doc? Oh, sure, yes, that's true. Why, of course it is. I've already got some patients. Now, my idea is to split the practice in a friendly way and then really go to work. We still have more than either of us could do. Tell him the rest, Betcher. Oh, yes, tell him the real idea. Well, sir, since we will be giving people better care and all, well, it's only fair we get paid more for it. Uh, what do you mean? He wants me to agree to a raise in fees, Matt. Yes, a raise. <laughs> he wants to make a lot of money. Everybody pays more than they can afford or they stay sick, according to him. Well, now, why shouldn't they pay more? Where'd you get the idea that being a doctor is like running a business, Betty? There's nothing wrong with a doctor making a living, is there? You haven't even proved to me that you are, Dr. Betty. Are you going to start that again? <laughs> He's one of these bleeding blister men, Matt. That's all he knows. Now, Dr. Adams, I am a patient man, but I've got my limits. Now, you watch what you're telling everybody about me, or there's going to be some trouble. Are you threatening me? Well, I'm just not going to stand for any more of your talk. Well, what are you going to do about it, then? I'm hey, going to insist on... Yes, Doc? Yes, what is it, Chester? Hey, Jake Worth has brought his boy to see you. Jake? Which boy? Billy. You know, Doc, the, the puny, sickly one. Jake says he's getting worse. He's took to having fits lately. He's got him in a wagon outside. <laughs> All right, Chester. I think I'll go with you, Doc. You'll be in better company than staying here. You're jealous, Adams. You're jealous, and what's more, you're greedy. That's enough, Betchel. Why, sure, you're on his side, Marshal. But I don't care. I've already got quite a few folks on mine. Any scoundrel can fool people for a little while. 
You coming, Matt? Yeah. Okay. You're uh, being pretty hard on him, Doc. Not hard enough. Doc, over here. Hello, Jake. Hello, Doc. Marshal? How are you, Jake? I just couldn't leave him here alone, Doc. I never know when he's going to have one of them fits again. They come on terrible sudden. I got him in the back of the wagon here. Wait a minute, Jake. What's the matter, Doc? Uh, I, I might as well tell you now. There's no use my even looking at your boy. What? Fits and the way your boy is. I don't know anything to do for him. But you got to do something. Uh, I'm sorry, Jake. I, I'm real sorry. Maybe I can do something, Mr. Worth. Who are you? My name is Betchel. Jameson Betchel. I'm the new doctor. Oh, sure. I've heard about you. Oh, and I don't listen to him, Jake. He can't help your boy anymore, and I can't. Doc Adams is a little old-fashioned, Mr. Worth. I can tell you there's always something that can be done for any patient. Oh, well, that's a lie. Let him talk, Doc. At least he's willing to try. There's nothing to try. I tell you, medicine doesn't understand cases like your boy yet. You're jealous of Dr. Betchell, ain't you? Oh, my jealous. Well, that's what I've heard folks saying. I didn't believe it at first, but I do now. Jake, I've heard all I need to know about Betchell's doctrine around here, and I don't think he should be practicing at all. I've told you to stop saying that. Now, wait a minute, Betchell. Let him talk. Well, I don't want to hear no more talk. No wonder so many folks are turning away from you, Doc. They need somebody who will help them, that's why. You think bleeding your boy is going to help him? There's other ways to treat him besides bleeding. Uh, like what? Well, if you don't happen to know, I Come don't... on, Dr. Betchell. Get to work on the boy. Why, certainly, Mr. Worth. Perhaps it'd be better if you drive him home first. I'll get my horse and follow. Anything you say, Doctor. Yeah, Doc. Uh, I'm going to take down my shingle. And I mean it this time. Oh, now, Doc, you can't do that. You just come and watch. Once Doc made up his mind about something, there was no talking him out of it. He took down his shingle all right, but nobody seemed to care much. Till two days later, when Betchel nearly doubled his fees. Then everybody blamed it on Doc somehow and got mad at him. But that didn't bother Doc. He started going to bed early and sleeping late for a change. And most of his time was spent in my office playing penny ante poker with Chester. He wouldn't even talk about it. Till the day I heard something I thought might rouse him, I went back to tell him about it. I'd ask where Claire Dawson just to make me something fair sometimes. <laughs> Mr. Dillon, you are getting this game. This is the easiest money I ever made. Oh, yeah. That's a while. Get it back, Chester. The whole 90 cents. <laughs> uh, Doc. Yes, Matt? You know old Miss Cullen. Mrs. Cullen? Well, I ought to. I brought her back to life half a dozen times. Or you won't have to anymore, Doc. What's happened? She died about noon today. She did? Dr. Betchell decided a good bleeding was what she needed. Bleeding? That poor old lady. Yeah, her boy told me. No that. wonder she died. She couldn't stand that. Why didn't she send for me? Oh, well, maybe she'd heard that she'd quit. I'd Doc. have gone if she'd wanted me. 
The only reason I quit is so people will find out in a hurry what kind of a doctor this Betchel is. It'd take him twice as long if I was still on the job. And the sooner they find out, the less harm he'll be able to do. What about Miss Cullen? Oh, she she was 90 years old, Matt. Betchel killed her all right, but she couldn't have lived much longer anyway. Well, maybe her death will save lives in the long run. I don't know. Yeah, I guess you're right, Doc. I hadn't thought about it that way. I'm going to go to the Alphaganza and have me a drink. Anybody want to join me? Thousands of smokers who are changing to L&M every day. To the millions who now smoke L&M, here is your assurance. L&M gives superior filtration because of its superior filter. Superior taste because of L&M's superior tobaccos. Yes, L&M tobaccos are tasty, full of flavor, and light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is the purest tip that ever touched your lips. It's white. All white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M Superior Tobacco, it actually tones up the taste, actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Yes, L&M's got everything. Superior taste, superior tobacco, superior filter. That's why it's America's best filter tip cigarette. Try L&M today. You buying, Doc? Oh, yes, I'm buying, Chester. You know, a man who isn't working shouldn't be spending money, Doc. Can't think of a better time to spend it. Doc? All right, Sam. Uh, What'll it be, gentlemen? Shot of rye and a glass of beer all around, Sam. Sure, Doc. (laughs) Oh, Sam, uh, by the way, how's your back feel? Oh, why? I haven't noticed it so much lately. Well, I told you it might go away by itself. (laughs) Well, you said there was nothing you could do for it, so I went to see Dr. Betchel. Oh, yeah, yeah. I suppose he fixed it. He told me to mix some cold water and vinegar and salt and rub it with that. Vinegar? I've also been taking unicorn root and cayenne pepper. Well, you're a strong man if that hasn't ruined you. Well, (laughs) made me so sick I can't feel my back no more. Mm. Uh, Doc, I, I shouldn't have gone to him. That ain't no way to treat anything. I'll get you your drinks now. Mm. Well, Doc, there's one man who's found out. One isn't enough, man. Doc. Hello, Jake. You gotta come out to the ranch, Doc. You gotta come out now. Why? What's wrong? It's the boy, Billy. Oh. Well, I can't go, Jake. Of course you can. It's not my case. I told Dr. Bitzel not to come back no more. I told him on my way in here. I guess you didn't make it too clear, Jake. What? I might have known that this was what you had in mind. What are you doing here? You're after Dr. Adams to take care of Billy. I sure am. Well, he's not going to do it. Don't you tell me what I'm going to do. Bitzel, after what you've done to that boy, it's a wonder he's still alive. I should have stopped you right off. What did he do, Jake? I'll tell you what he did, Marshal. When it got real cold at night, he took the boy's clothes off and made him go outside and lay on some sacks. And then he threw buckets of ice-cold spring water on and kept it up until Billy was hollering and screaming. But it finally made him quit. And that boy's real sick now. But Betchel ain't gonna get nowhere near him again. If you'd have let me finish the treatment, he'd been all right. Finish the treatment? If he'd have let you finish the treatment... 
The boy that died of pneumonia. Adams, you talk anymore. I'm just going to tear you open. No, you're not, Betchel. Oh, let him fight his own fights, Marshal. No, I won't let him. Doc's too valuable a man to get busted up in a brawl. By golly, the marshal's right. I'll stand up for him, too. You're just a fool, Jake. Yeah, I don't know. You're coming with me, Doc? On one condition. What? That Betchel leaves town. Why, you... All right, hold it, Betchel. I don't know how you got started in this business. Probably in a medicine show. It's happened before. But you're a fraud. You're the most obvious fraud I ever saw. I won't. And I won't stand for your posing as a doctor anymore. Not around here, I won't. You've done all the harm you're going to do. I'm with you there, Doc. I said I'd tear you open, Adams, and I'll... Don't try it, Don't try it. I might have known a doctor would be carrying a knife. He ain't no more doctor than I am. Chester... Yes, sir? When he comes to, lock him up. We'll throw him on the first stage, leaving Dodge. I'll do it with pleasure, Mr. Dillon. Will you come now, Doc? You understand, Jake? I can't cure your boy's fits. I should have listened to you in the first place, Doc. There are a lot of people who should have, Jake. That's true, Marshal. Will you come, Doc? You can keep those drinks, Sam. I don't have time to waste in here anymore. This is William Conrad. As you may know, Gunsmoke is going into its second year on radio. Now, during this time, many of you have written the makers of Chesterfield and L&M filters, asking them to put gun smoke on television, too. Well, here's some good news for you. Gun smoke is going on TV starting Saturday, September 10th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time over the CBS television network. If you enjoy our radio shows, I know you'll go for gun smoke on TV. Now TV will have an authentic adult western. The Gunsmoke you know. Remember, next week, Gunsmoke Radio at this time, and in two weeks, Gunsmoke TV at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Both brought to you by Liggett and Myers, makers of Chesterfield and L&M Filters. <laughs> Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, James Nusser, Frank Cady, and Ann Morrison. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNair is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Put a smile in your smoking. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. This amazing quality detective electronically checks and controls the making of your Chesterfield, giving a uniformity and smoking quality never possible before. For the first time, you get a perfect smoke column from end to end. From the first puff to the last puff, Chesterfield smokes smoother. Chesterfield smokes cooler. Chesterfield is best for you. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. Put a smile in your smoking, just give them a try. Light up a Chesterfield, they satisfy. Remember, listen again.
again next week for another transcribed story of the Western Frontier. It's America growing west in the 1870s. It's Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Builders.